Last time, well, last time I actually filmed was just about two weeks ago. I think I was in Texas, in the panhandle and the grasslands. This ain't Texas. <clears throat> yep, back in Michigan. I don't know if you can see, but trees are just barely budding out. It is the 22nd of April, and we are at one of my uh, go to favorite, whatever you want to call it, haunts here at the tip of the Mitt in Michigan. We're about five miles south of the Mackinac Bridge. Mackinac is the big bridge between the two peninsulas, five miles long. We are at, or I am at, French Farm Lake. It is some free camping here. It's like five miles south of Mackinac City. And typically this place is very busy, at least this end of it during the week, uh, during the weekend. The local fishing haunt. Yeah. Yeah, French Farm Lake. And I'm the only one here. I don't know if that has ever happened in the several many years I've been coming here. Usually this is at the very end of the I don't know, like a mile and a half sand road. There's about seven good campsites. And uh, typically down here at the end, it's uh, someone's always here. Too early in the season. Snow just melted. Uh, I thought the lake was still frozen, but it's, it's not. I looked it. I'm back in Michigan and everything's gray. I haven't seen the sun in a week. So uh, I come up here and drive the campsite right down here. Gonna be here for a day or two. I, know, I got food for several days. I don't know how long I'm gonna stay. It's uh, it's cold. <laughs> I don't know what the temperature is right now. It's gotta be maybe 50, maybe. I think the overnight lows are near freezing, so we're running heat. And uh, that's not too bad, but it's not the type of camping I want to do anymore. I've done my share. But here on the shoulder seasons, it's uh, it's kind of nice to have the place to yourself, and that's kind of up my alley. So we snagged this little campsite. Got a little fire going. And uh, gonna be here for a day or two. Yeah. Picked up a half a bag of garbage. I think some snowmobile campers must have been down here all winter. And uh, Northern Michigan camping. So I promised you, or at least I threatened you with, a uh, video summing up the last three and a half months, the snowbirding I did. So that's kind of what we're doing. I'm gonna spend a little time going over some really high level numbers, nothing. Nothing that's going to make your eyes glaze over too much. And uh, talk about some thoughts and some realizations I've had with uh, the time I spent this uh, last almost four months on the road. So let's get into that. All right, 
let's get into this. It's just barely sprinkling and 52 degrees. I just looked. I took some notes. Um, this is going to be a very high level, level overlook of uh, some expenditures I made um, over my 2023 snowbird season. Um, not going to glaze your eyes over, hopefully. I retired December 31st, jumped in the van the first week of January, and headed south just because I wanted to be a snowbird. It's been a goal of mine for a very long time, and I drove like a maniac and because uh, I wanted to see a, a large part of the country that was not being snowed on, and I succeeded. Um, so yeah, I drove 8,800 miles, 8,800 miles in 100 days, 100 nights, um, 101 days, whatever. It just turned out that way, didn't plan that, but nice round number. In fact, I'm going to talk a lot in round numbers. 8,800 miles, I spent uh, $1,700 in fuel. Of course, you may drive more, more drive less, but my three big expenditures by far, fuel, food, and camping. Everything else combined didn't add up to one of those, fuel, food, or camping. Um, like I said, I drove like an idiot, 8,800 miles, paid $1,700 in fuel, and saw a lot of the country, um, had a lot of fun. My second biggest one was um, groceries, 1,200 bucks, about $400 a month, give or take, which is just a little bit more expensive than what my uh, normal is. Um, just single guy eating somewhat healthy. Um, I, I'm going to attribute to the higher cost, and it's just barely higher. higher. Um, well, inflation hit about the same time, as we all know. Also, um, I'm buying smaller portions because you're in a van. I'm hitting the grocery store more often, buying more fresh stuff, trying to eat healthy. But really, you're not buying in bulk and storing stuff. And when you have to buy everything small portions, you're paying a little more. And it was I don't know, less than 10% more, but I take good notes and I could, I could see the difference. What else? Camping. Camping is the big one. Camping, I paid $1,000 in paid camping. I was gone 100 days. And it just happened to be 66 days paid camping, 33 paid day, or 34 days, uh, I'm sorry, 34 days, 34 days, it's raining on my notes, 34 days paid camping, 66 days boondocking. Um, out, out of the 34 days paid, 19 of them were in Florida. Florida is expensive also warm. It was much warmer in Florida this last year, and I think most years than um, Arizona and Texas. Um, it's also more expensive. You have to uh, reserve campsites almost a year in advance. You have to plan, and there's very few free camping opportunities in Florida. They exist uh, mostly in the water management districts. There's free camping. Um, of course, there's also Walmart, and there's a few other, you know, parking lot situations and a few other here or there, but mostly the free stuff is going to be some of the, uh, um, well, there's a couple state forests here and there, but mostly it's water management districts. But it's very hard to do a lot of free camping in Florida. can be done. It's just difficult. So you're going to do a lot more paid camping in Florida, and my experience has showed it. Um, out of the 34 nights, almost 20 of them were in Florida. The rest were in Texas and nothing in Arizona. The, uh, the farther west you go, the more BLM land, Bureau of Land Management, and just free opportunities for camping. It's just cheaper, I guess is what I'm saying, when you're out there because you got all the free camping and you're not driving very far. Um, so I think even just looking at my numbers, Coming all the way from Michigan, it's cheaper for me if that was my main motivation was to spend less money um, 
to drive all the way out to California or to uh, the Arizona California border and uh, stay there all winter and then turn around and drive all the way back even with all those big gas it's still cheaper but that's not what I'm doing I'm um, I built this van because I wanted to travel light and fast and that's what I'm gonna do for the next maybe three four years is I'm gonna put a lot of miles on this van I'm going to uh, see a lot of the country this was three or four months I just wanted to go uh, get away from the snow and um, drive pretty much the route I did I was hoping to get a little bit farther north I came back on I-40 I wanted to actually come across the loneliest road and come through uh, Salt Lake City coming home but I didn't do that it was too cold so now I'm here in Michigan it is drizzly and 50 degrees and I am uh, home <laughs> but yeah those are some numbers 100 days 8,800 miles, and I spent, uh, you know, four grand, something like that. Had a lot of fun. So, uh, yeah, welcome to Michigan. Drizzling in 50. So those are the numbers. I spent a little over four grand, 100 days, and uh, anyways, let's, uh, let's take a little bit of a walk. It's drizzling, so that fire is not going anywhere. As I was saying before, I do have a uh, couple trips planned this summer. The videos are going to slow down quite a bit. Uh, once a week, hopefully, maybe less. And uh, we'll see what, uh, what happens. This, this fall, maybe coming into this winter, we'll start snowbirding again. And uh, over the next several years, i got some really nice trips planned. I'm going to try to make it to Alaska here in the next two to three years. But right now, right now we're just hanging out in Michigan. I have to say it is a pretty state. As gray and dreary as it is for six months out of the year. And we are at the end of it, hopefully. Take a walk back out here to uh, to the lake, French Farm Lake. Yeah, I came out here about an hour before I started filming. And I could see the lake out here, and it was just gray. Just like the sky and i'm like is that still frozen over i, I thought it can't be still frozen oh yeah no it's not it was just gray this looks like a new board rock yeah somebody did a little work out here I don't remember being, this being so nice. It's quiet. I can hear way off in the distance cars out on I-75. We're, oh, five miles south of Mackinac City and probably three miles west I-75. Right up here at the tip of the mitt. A nice little, boy, what a nice little uh, tent camp this could be. Yeah, usually there's huh. yeah, cool. Usually there's a couple boats out here all summer long. 
fishing. Yeah, you can see gray skies, gray water. It's what it's like in Michigan for six months out of the year, but boy, summertime comes and I haven't found a state better. So yeah, we're going to bop around Michigan for uh, most of this summer. I have some projects keeping me around the uh, Great Lakes State, but we do have some trips I want to take. Um, I have some hunting property up in the western UP, probably show up up there. Um, if I'm going that far, one of my favorite parts of the country is the uh, North Shore of Minnesota where uh, Minnesota wraps around Lake Superior. If you've never been up there, it is gorgeous. If you look back on my channel, I probably have a video or two um, from 2020 when I was driving around up there in the middle of the pandemic. And uh, I do have uh, a couple big trips I wanna take over the next year or two, um, both directions, east and west during the summer. Um, get back out to the Maritimes and uh, Labrador, um, Canadian, way up in the, the Canadian um, Maritimes. I also want to head west, Oregon and Washington State, two areas I've never been to. That's gorgeous. I uh, do want to get to uh, Alaska at some point, probably three years out, something like that. But now, Michigan, what can I say? The gray state, it will get nice and sunny. In fact, I will say that uh, Michigan is probably one of the nicest areas, nicest states during the summer that I have been to. As long as you stay away from the black flies and mosquitoes of the UP during uh, their seasons, it's just uh, gorgeous. Uh, Videos will probably slow down. I've already said um, probably once a week, hopefully on Sunday. It may even slow down more than that, but definitely this winter we will pick back up. All right, it's Sunday morning. We're uh, going to try to get out of here. It's um, 36 degrees and spitting snow. So um, yeah, let's uh, drive out of French Farm Lake. I thought I'd uh, share a last couple thoughts here and. Uh, it's uh camera's gonna be a bit shaky. I'm still working on my dual camera setup. So excuse me if I don't look directly into the camera for most of this as I'm driving. We're at the very end of French Farm Lake, down by the boat ramp. Yeah, this is gonna be a shaky shaky camera setup yeah nice little boat ramp um well it's just gravel they get a uh, quite a bit of fishing out of here during the summer months not sure how far this little this is if i didn't mention it french farm is all free camping um i think there's seven sites here give or take they're um, defined sites, tree camping, um, Department of Natural Resources. As I said, it is 36 and was spitting snow earlier. So I am the only one here, surprisingly, for late, uh, late April. I'm not even sure what date it is. I believe it's the 27th. No, I believe it's Sunday. When I retired, I just lost all track of um, all track of what day of the week it is. So I wanted to mention a couple things about the trip. 
uh, right before I left, I splurged and bought uh, a set of KO2 tires. And I'll put a pit picture of them up here. They were expensive, but I'm glad I did it. Um, they got some serious tread to them. The Promasters take a, hey, there's a little squirrel running in front of me. The Promasters take a very specific tire. They run, because they are a um, commercial vehicle, they run 80 pounds of pressure. Well, 80 in the rear and 60 in the uh, front, 65, for a weight distribution. Not a lot of heavy tread tires are made that take that kind of uh, air pressure. KO2s are one of them. And I, I'll put on the screen here <laughs> what I paid for them, because I forget right off the bat, but they were expensive. And I really, they, I could probably got another year out of my stock tires. They were, they were four years old, and I had uh, oh, 40,000 miles on them. They were, they were getting done, but I could have got another year out of them. But I wanted the KO2s because of the heavy tread. Not so much for getting me, well, I do travel on some sand every once in a while. It's nice to have the tread, but also the sharp rocks of the, of the uh, desert southwest. I'm glad I had the... Uh, the, uh, the extra amount of rubber just to protect the tires. Somebody dropped a mattress off off from the woods. That's crap. Gotta keep it clean, people. I took a half a bag of garbage out of the uh, campsite I was at. Huh. I don't know why my GoPro keeps turning off automatically. And just, uh, after a couple minutes, it just uh, automatically stops. There's another campsite. Site number three. I think there's seven total. Don't hold me on that. They do fill up pretty good on the weekends here at uh, French Farm Lake. The weekdays, this you can usually pretty get in get into here. It's on I Overlander, so it's well used. I found anything on I Overlander gets gets uh, is pretty well known. But I use this spot um, quite often. It's uh, just south of the Mackinac Bridge. It's a great layover spot. A lot of people come in here. Uh, especially during their summer trips when they're when they're driving you see them come in just over overnight another spot there spot number two they're well defined with a little placard and they say uh camp card a little clip there are no camp cards people just come in here and park but you should stay to the designated spots north end of the lake. I believe it is very shallow. I am hoping to get a kayak here in the next few weeks. I'm going to kayak French Farm sometime this summer. I have a couple van upgrades I have uh, scheduled. I'll probably show you. I, you know, I, I got some hard attachments I'm going to put on for my awning. I have a hitch coming thinking I'm probably going to, just seeing how much weight this uh, ProMaster will take, probably put an e-bike on the back of this thing for next year. A kayak, e-bike, all kinds of stuff going on. And this is the last campsite. This is my favorite one. I usually stop here. This is number uh, number one here on the left. It's a little bit of a high. Uh, I'm even gonna. Yeah, it's a little bit of high high ground there, but you can get up into it. I believe it's about a mile down here. This little. You can see it's uh, the road is sand. Everything up here in northern Michigan is sand. Um, it had rained and spit snow all night long. 
and you see a bunch of mud puddles, but there are there is no mud up here. It's all hard uh, sand bottom. In fact, I'm kind of surprised there's standing water with as much uh, sand as we have because it just kind of drains like a sieve. And that is the end of the campgrounds. There's a little bit of a, there's a hiking trail that runs through here. There's a bit of a parking lot here on the left that I've always thought of as a, uh, as an overflow area right there. In a pinch, I'd park there for just a quick overnight. And, uh, should be coming out to the main paved road here in a second. So anyways, yeah, I just wanted to, uh, this gets a little bumpy. I wanted to show you uh, coming out of uh, French Farm. I have a uh, couple videos scheduled for the, that I, I want to do over the next few weeks. A couple repair and build stuff here on the van, a couple trips. But really what I'm doing is biding my time. I am putting my house up for sale next week. Hopefully that goes quickly. And for a while, I'm going to be mostly in the van. I have some family I'm going to, going to uh, be home basing uh, with over probably the next couple years. And uh, as I travel around, I will be mostly full time in the van. Yeah, there we go. There's the main road. And just north, I'm not going to drive up there right now, but just a quarter mile um, past this stop sign, um, straight ahead, is a Michigan Dark Star Park. Dark Sky Park. It's um, actually Lake Michigan is uh, to the left about a half mile. And actually, we could drive down there. I'm not going to go to the Dark Sky Park which is to the right, right there, which is really cool. They got an observatory and all that. Wilderness State Park is a little bit farther up the road, but as you may see straight ahead is Lake Michigan and there's a little turn off up here. I've come up here and um, watched the sunset over Lake Michigan a few times. quick look to see what's going on on Lake Michigan. All right, got some rollers coming in. Not real big. Oh, there's one car parked over there. So yeah, I will leave you with the view of Lake Michigan until next time. Um, we'll see what, what else I can get up to. So see you then.